guys, Andrew with CPR Instructor Affiliates powered by Prime Medical Training. We are a nationwide AHA training center. And today I'm going to be taking you through how to teach the bradycardia algorithm for ACLS. Now, the reason why I'm sharing this is because uh, I found that the pocket cards that have the algorithms designed by the AHA just aren't helpful a lot of times because there's so much information jammed into these cards. And so they find students stumbling trying to figure out um, what they need to know and, and where that information is. And so during my classes, I go through each of the main algorithms and I have my own format that I write up here on the board, which is what I'm gonna be sharing with you today. And so with bradycardia, uh, I start out with that, get my marker here, and uh, I'll just put it up like this. I'm gonna show you exactly and, and pretend like you guys are the students. So bradycardia. All right, now we only treat symptomatic bradycardia. So tell me what are the signs and symptoms of bradycardia? And then the students, I'll start having them answer that. Uh, and I'll put it up here. I'll be all right, good. So low blood pressure, low um, or altered level of consciousness, um, poor skin condition. And some people can even say, uh, you know, breathing difficulty, chest pain, that's fine. So I say, great, so if we see bradycardia and they're symptomatic or unstable, then we need to treat that. So how do we start that off? We go IV, O2, monitor. And then what are my treatment options, guys? So then they'll start throwing out the different treatment options. You have atropine, one milligram, you have uh, <clears throat> pressure infusers like dopamine and ep epinephrine. And then um, what else can we use? And usually somebody will eventually say transcutaneous pacing. Now I make them look these answers up. I don't give them the answers. If I'm teaching and, uh, and they don't know the answer to my questions, I make them open their books or open their pocket cards and find the answer. Part of the reason I do that too is because when we get to the mega code later on, I want them to be familiar with how to reference and find information in their books or in their pocket reference cards uh, so that they're not stumbling through the mega code looking for it. So we're prepping them for these things. Um, transcutaneous pacing, I'll also let them know. I, I talk about it in our technology review when we go over the monitor, but I'll reiterate it and say, hey guys, so remember you're going to need to do two things. You need to set your beats per minute and 70 is a good middle ground. And then you need to um, uh, set your milliamps and you're always gonna start at zero if, it, if the monitor doesn't already default to that number. And then we're gonna go up until we get capture. So let's say we get capture at 35 milliamps. Then I'll ask them, so then what do we do after we see capture? And the answer that I'm looking for is that we go up another 10 milliamps. And, and I'll ask and say, so why do we go up from 35 to 45 milliamps? And, uh, and usually people don't know the answer to this. The answer is we do that because we wanna retain capture. So uh, when you hit 35 and you've got capture right there at that number, um, you're wavering and you have a chance of losing it. And when you lose capture, um, it's very difficult to regain capture oftentimes um, once you've lost it. So we go up another 10 to make sure that we lock that capture in. Um, and that is the bradycardic algorithm. And I tell them a few things too. I say, listen, um, there's no particular order that you need to follow. Uh, this is uh, just your multiple treatment options. Uh, and you use your own discretion what you think is gonna be most appropriate. Second of all, atropine is considered the uh, go-to drug for bradycardia. However, in real life, more and more people are starting to go to epinephrine. And part of the reason is atropine, even in my own experience, is only effective half of the time. And uh, the other half, there's something else going on and it's just not hitting that problem. Whereas at epinephrine, you give that you're gonna cause the entire body to vasoconstrict, then that is definitely gonna cause the heart um, to, uh, to you know, speed up. Um, and so I've been really pushing people, 
go the epi route, you know, as long as that's in your protocol uh, and you feel like you want to give one drug, I would go epi because it's going to have a higher efficacy than atropine. Um, and that's anecdotal, uh, my personal experience, but I'm also seeing that more and more providers, physicians are choosing that as their um, go-to sort uh, drug as well. So that's the bradycardic algorithm. I just write that out on the board. It's very simple. You know, I've given them the highlights of what they need to know for both the mega code and the test. Uh, and so uh, then we move on. Please make sure to follow uh, this channel. We would love to um, engage with you more. We're gonna be doing more algorithms. So stay tuned for that. Um, you can find our other videos that we do reviews and we talk about how to run and grow CPR businesses. So hit the follow button, hit the like button, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.